Welcome to District 32, Immersion, inspiration for ambitious business owners with big dreams. Hello, my name is Lorraine of District 32 and I have got the absolute pleasure of interviewing or having a conversation with the infamous Paul Roach. How are you, Paul? Awesome. Thanks, Lorraine. Yourself? I am very well, thank you. Love these conversations. I always learn something myself. Um, I tell you, I've got a bloody great job interviewing all these experts. It's fantastic, right? Yeah, you just sit around all day talking to people. Yeah, what a, what a chat, yeah. have a coffee. It's yeah. fine. But look, the, the headline that's going to put this uh, a stamp on this um, interview, Paul, is, you know, we're having a chat a wee while ago around, you know, what is hot topics at the minute? What are the hot topics? What do business owners need to know? And you said right away, you know, um, now business owners are asking, what do we have to do? What do we have to think about about? The recession. Some might say we're already in it. Some might say we're just coming into it, or we're, um, it, it's here and coming anyway. We can feel it, taste it, and smell it. So let's yep. let's start there, um, Paul. What are your thoughts on that? What do we need to do? What do we need to think about? Yeah, let, let's maybe. Um, there's there's always going to be the doubters out there that say the economy is too good, things are going too well. But let's face the realities of the seasons of business. Yeah, summer, autumn, winter, spring. Yeah where the business cycles go through it, we all go through it. We're coming to the end of summer, if not well into autumn at the moment. We're, you know, we've we've had some good times in COVID. It's presented opportunities. It's created a lot of stresses. Mm. We're now into autumn. Autumn's a different challenge. So how do we take control or keep control of our businesses in tougher times? We've got rising interest rates, inflation, um, labour shortages, all sorts of things happening that are helping to contract our, our workflow and our economy. And now we've got to be hold the reins tighter. We do. And I was talking to you just yesterday around all the the issues that, that business owners are facing or some of the, you touched on it there, but um, the conversation was around my business would be much bigger if I could just get the materials and if I could just get the labour, but we can't. We're being stopped from growing um, but we're still busting at the busting at the seams, and I'm I guess that's just one angle um, around there. And I'm sure you don't have a magic wand for that, um, Paul. But no, nice <laughs> <to have. laughs> not yet. These applications are are at an all time high as we speak. So you know, there's that's there's right, an influx yeah. of labour going to be coming into the economy. That's that's for sure. Which is fantastic, you know, for yeah, business. It's, awesome. um, it's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. 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 Okay. So where where do we start then? What are we thinking about, Paul? Imagine, you know. That's what's coming. We're coming into autumn. What do we need to be thinking coming about? Autumn, need to adjust our headspace. Okay. Autumn, the land, of, the land of opportunity. Okay. Land of opportunity. Why? Because the majority of business owners won't be able to cope with the change. The panic, the stress, haven't got a plan, haven't got a focus, haven't got direction in survival mode. And they'll listen to right. the news and all the bad news and all the crap that gets published. And they'll forget about the fact that, hey, I just need to run my business a little bit tighter. I need to keep a fresh headspace, keep myself relaxed, keep myself focused, keep myself thinking. When I, when I do those things, I'll see opportunity out in front of me because other business owners are going to fall over. Yeah. My prediction is there's going to be a lot of insolvencies in the next one to two years. Definitely. Yep. Well, we Great opportunity. this. We were listening to an economist just last week as well on a presentation, and that was he was saying, you know, it's the, it's the, it's it, there is where the pain is there and where people are going to fall over. That's an opportunity for business owners who have a plan, who have yep. structured thinking, who are calm head, you know, to buy those businesses. Yep. Um, and that that's just one opportunity. Yes, yes, it's and it's it's a big one because the fastest way to grow is through through acquisition. If you can go and acquire another business, particularly nice and cheaply, and yeah. others are falling over, hey, you get opportunity. Yeah. And while other business owners are looking at their feet, not focusing opportunity, even if you don't buy the other businesses, there's got to be opportunity out there for you to grow your market share. Yeah. Yeah. When when we're looking at, oh, we need good times to grow, no, growing, growing in the in the, the the autumn months of business, great time to grow. So let's dig into that a little bit. Um, lean into that a little bit, um, Paul. So, 
yeah, autumn is the time, you know, where you're you're planting. So what do you mean it's a great time to grow? There's a there's a lot of a lot of business owners see a bit of contraction in the economy, a little bit tighter conditions, and they'll stop their marketing. They'll go, Oh, I don't want to spend on marketing. Right. They'll yes. they'll lose focus on their customers. Right. Right. They'll deliver poor service because they're retracting their business or they're contracting right. their business. Yeah. Okay. Now's the opportunity to go, you know what? What can we pick up? What can we do? Where's where's our competitors' weaknesses that we can seize the opportunity? So double down in marketing, double yeah. down in customer service. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You've got to look after your customers to see you through autumn and winter yet. Yeah. Definitely look after the customers. The customers look after the business. The cycle of business just keeps going round. If we forget to look after our customers, we've got a big problem on our hands, haven't we? We do. Yeah. <laughs> customers are the business, yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. So we've got to look after our team and our team look after the customers. The customer look after the business. Keeps going round. So our team are going to feel a bit of pressure too. Mm. After times, they're a little bit more stress and all the rest of it. We've got to, got to look after them. And how are you finding it at the minute? I mean, you've got a range of clients at the minute. Are, is everyone tightening their belt? Is everyone reducing costs, increasing um, prices? Is everyone being smart about it and actually, you know, preparing for that? Um, or are some people think, you know, well, she'll be right. We'll, we'll <laughs> take action when 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 um, when we need to. Look, What's one, the general? I think I think one one sure thing about being coached and whether it's me coaching a business or some other coach coaching a business is you get the reality check pretty early. You don't wait for everyone else to be part of the pack. You act quickly. Yep, inflation. We need to we need to make sure our, our, our prices are at the right level to cover inflation, cover our cost, cost increases, and everything else that go with it. Absolutely, they're there. But we've got to be smart about: Do we increase our costs? Mm. Do we want to do that at the moment? Have we run the model of what our business looks like if we do increase the costs? Yeah. Will our business survive if our sales drop twenty percent? Where's our break-even point? Mm. How does that look like? Mm. Yeah. Can we go and acquire a competitor cheaply and double our business and keep our overheads the same? Mm. Without increasing the, the yeah. prices and, and keeping yeah. them down. Yeah. yeah. Keeping everything down. So I've I've got my 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 client base firmly focused on what are the opportunities. Beautiful. What are they looking for? You know, I've got one about to about to sign a deal to buy to buy a an, a junk business because the business owner's had enough. He's sick of dealing with the stress. Great opportunity. That's another it's another massive issue at the minute. Is if I'm, I'm maybe one in three or maybe two in three conversations I'm having at the minute is around mental health, mental health of the business owner, mental health of the staff, mental health of the customers. Um, it's a big thing. It's as if everybody seems to have well. It's a general um, sweeping yeah. statement there, but you know people have held on, and then all of a sudden, you know the the effects are really are really hitting everybody. Um, some some were sooner, some were more delayed response, but that's another. Um, it is huge. It is huge, and the untold impact of mental health is is still yet to be you know really really felt. And I can understand. Being a business owner myself, the the ups and downs of COVID and the do's and don'ts and everything that's gone on, um, and the impact of um, government policy and how that's you know how that's played out in the economy, um, a lot of business owners have have been really stressed by that. Conversely, there's businesses that have been absolutely flat out and they're exhausted. Yep, that's a big one. It's a big one in the network. People are yeah. like. Um... I can't take on any more work. We can't. We're struggling for for us as a business. We can't get a trades on board for site because they don't want the work. They don't need the work, and they can't spare ten minutes. That's right. That's right. Well, they're just flat, flat out. But also, they 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 haven't learned to say no. Yeah. So they don't learn to say no. So they're always saying yes by default, <laughs> as it you know as it goes. So then they're always saying yes. They get more and more work. But realistically, where do you stop? How much is burnout? Next- mm. Yeah, they hit burnout and keep going. Mm. Then they burn their team and their team leaves. So then they end up paying a bigger price for it. Yeah. But if you're not mentally on your game and physically on your game, you're going to struggle. So some of the points you've raised there, and I can 
you know, you, you brought that up a few times. And I know you're a big advocate, Paul, of um, taking care of yourself, your mind, your body, and also of meditation. Yep. And making that a prime importance so that you're able to handle stress and have appropriate decision making yep. um, in the business and longevity. So there's the look after yourself and your mental health. There's a learn when to say no. There's look for the opportunities. Make sure you're running a tight ship. It yep. is autumn. Double down in your marketing. Double down in your customer service. Yep. Um, what else? What else do you think we should be thinking about, Paul? Look, you've, you've you've really got to see your business into the future. What does your plan look like? What are your strategies? How are you developing your business? Yep. Is what you've done for the last five years going to be what you do for the next five years, or has the market changed? Have the opportunities changed? And really, I know I say it a lot, right? It's like, but if you haven't got a plan, you've got it all in your head. If you've got it all in your head and you've got all the other challenges going on in your business, mm. you're probably going to struggle. So get it down on paper. Yeah. Get it in a format where you can assess it and go, hey, if I do acquire another business or my business does drop 20%, how does that cash flow look like? Yeah. Because cash flow is king. Okay, you can, I hope people in the summer months, if they've all had good summer months, have been squirreling away their, their reserves of cash. And I hope people have got money in the bank because if you do get a few bad months, yep. you're not going to be under under stress. But making sure you know where your cash flow is going over the next 12 months, two years, and knowing what that looks like, really important. And as part of that plan, I guess you're talking there about cash flow, the, the modelling, the financial modelling is of huge importance. It's that if this happens, then that. If that happens, then this. What happens if we move that a little bit? And and yep. that's where really working with somebody else helps because you're you've been running the same tracks all the time. There's a groove in there. You need somebody else yeah. to look from outside the tin, pull you out of there a little bit, and say, "Have you looked at this, or have you thought about that?" And we generally don't because we always do what we've always done, you know. That's right. um, that's right. And wow. so, yeah, look, and and I think I think by the there's a there's also a, a misconception with a lot of business owners that oh that's what my accountant does. Well, if you've got an in-house accountant, great. But if you've got an external accountant, I can almost guarantee you're not paying your accountant to deliver that information to you. All you're paying your accountant for is compliance. Two yeah. very, very different things. Compliance, tax returns are done, you know, um, your BAS statements are lodged and all those good things that need to be done and all your payments are made. That's all sorted and you're looking at your tax planning. Fantastic stuff. Accountants do that really, really well. And from what my accountant tells me, he does that 99% of the time. 1% of the time, he actually sits down with business owners and gets them to work out how they can make more money. Wow. The reason why it's only 1%, he says, because people, business owners don't pay for it, but they think they're getting it. Uh -huh. And they don't get it. They don't get it. So yeah. if you're not a numbers person, you need a numbers person that can actually work out for you strategically what your business can do. 20% change in sales, will you still make money? What that's right. <laughs> well, you make yeah. profit. Will you go backwards? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. And have I got the cash reserves to survive? Because mm. at the end of the day, cash is key. Mm. And does more customers mean that you can still resource them? You know, Well, exactly you right. That's too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I want growth, but how are you going to service it? And then it's like, well, I'm not really going to service it. Then you start, you put your effort into winning your customers, then you lose them again because someone else can service them. So it's a, you don't want to be in that vicious cycle. You've got to be in a, a nice level, level space okay. where you've got planned growth and consistently growing. So meditation, health, planning, cash forecast, look at the opportunities, tight ship, um, you know, whether it's your accountant or whether it's a coach, go and speak to somebody, show them your projections, show them your modelling, get somebody to check your thinking. Yes. Um, and make sure that, you know, and even if even if you are on the money, you know, just to get someone else to say, yeah, you're on the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> it's right. great, you know, you get your confidence and faith moving forward. And I think it's such a shame because what we see, or what I see, a lot in businesses, yeah, there's loads of successful businesses in, out there, but unfortunately, there's loads of small businesses not making it. And that's always been the case. It's never changing. It's because we don't get any formal training. Anybody can go and start a business. 
There's yep. no compliance checks, you know, apart there's your tax and your super and stuff, but there's no compliance. Um, a lot of the time, you know, there might not even be qualifications, but we're certainly not taught how to do business planning. We're not taught how to do financial projections, how to read the financial statements, what marketing is, what's involved in, in starting a business. And it's like, we wonder why we struggle because we don't actually get the training and we don't get the time to practice before we do either. We're just generally straight on the field. <laughs> It's it's like I I could almost guarantee that every business owner has tried to write a business plan at some stage. Yeah, on a napkin. <laughs> I, and, and I can almost guarantee that everyone's hit the wall at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Either the napkin's not big enough or they literally hit the wall. Yeah. You've actually got to learn how to do these things. Mm-hmm. You've actually got to learn how to plan. You've got to learn how to project your financial numbers. You've got to learn how to manage your costs, learn how to drill down on your business so you know where they're coming from. I don't know why we think we have an expectation we're going to know these things when we become a business owner. Yeah. We put an expectation on ourselves that we're going to know it, but in reality, we've never learned it. Why put an expectation? We can't be 65 specialists in our areas and 65 <laughs> specializations. You know, we can only um, to do, what, do what we're good at. I guess the advice in the back of there is, you know, at this time before the autumn is, Go and spend some money on it, even if on a one-off session with somebody just to check your thinking and your projections yeah. and your modeling um, and explore the opportunities. It'll be money well spent. On... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's okay. about getting in before you're heading into a zone where you don't want to be. Yeah. Because turning the ship sometimes takes time. That's right. Wait <laughs> in the middle of the storm and then go, ah, oh, crap, I wish I'd done something, you know, six months ago. And the bigger the ship the bigger it, the longer it takes to time. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes the um, lack of focus in the business owner's headspace, mm. the longer it takes to get their thinking around to, they need to turn the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. And sometimes as well, we were talking to somebody a wee while ago and they were helping, we've got people who help us in our business and um, they might just, Chip away at your thinking. There's a, there's a, a there's a like a hint is dropped. Have you thought about this? And yes. then a couple of weeks later, it's maybe a bigger hint. <laughs> this, like, and then you know, it takes it takes a wee while for it to sink in, and then it's like big hint. Yes. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, I'm listening now. I'm listening. Um, but we need that, and sometimes we don't listen the first time, and sometimes it goes over our head. Um, yeah. And what we're human, we gotta. It's okay to say we need help. Mm. We're not experts on everything. Tell yeah. me what we're missing. Exactly right. Mm. And generally speaking, um, expert help like this is really cheap. That's right. <laughs> if, if you measure it in terms of the potential yeah. consequences, if you don't get it, right? Yeah. And and, and better, also in terms of the size of an opportunity that you might have missed. Exactly right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, huge. And it, and there is already out there lots of businesses that are you know, well-priced, can be priced, ready for purchase. Wow. More coming. There's a stream coming through. Yeah. Mm, plenty of them. Paul, you've got a, um, you've got a, a two-day business planning workshop coming up. Is that right? It's two-day. When is, when is that? The last Monday and Tuesday in August. So the last Monday and Tuesday month, in August. Yeah. And what do you actually go through for business owners? You know, that sounds like a long time to do a business plan. What are the components that you're going to take people through? And um, at what stage of business should people be at to sort of look at that? Um, give me a little bit of information on that, please, just to paint sure. a better picture for us. Sure. So the aim of the workshop is not actually the plan. The aim of the <laughs> workshop is to take you through the process and educate you in the process of planning. Right. Perfect. Totally Perfect. different, totally different outcome. As a consequence okay. of you learning how to write a plan and get, gain the knowledge around what you need, you can then develop your plan. So you, you do walk out the door after two days with your plan done. And the beauty of it is that you are isolated away from your business. Mm-hmm. You're in a room with a number of other business owners ranging from startups to 20 million, let's say in that in that bracket, one or two people from each business and you're coached on what you need to learn, what you need to think about and get you thinking 
about your business. All the things from your current strategies, how you're going to grow. Oh, yeah, I want growth. But people go, yeah, I want to, I want more and more revenue. But revenue is not necessarily the driver of a business. Yep. There's, a, there's a right size for a business. Sometimes yep. if you grow a bit big, then you've got to add more resources in to service it. As we're talking about, you add all the salaries in, all of a sudden you're making less money. What's the point? Yep. So it's 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 how do you grow financially? How do you grow with your team? How do you grow with your product range? Who's your target markets? What are your strategies? What's your SWOT analysis? So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Yeah. And then we we take it all the way down after your marketing plan to go. What are the strategies that you're going to commit to do in the next three months, six months, nine months, and twelve months? Then for the next four years. Obviously, they're a little nice. bit, a little bit less focused four years out than what they are in the next quarter. Yeah. But then we print off your strategies and go. Well, you've got five team members. This is their commitments. This is your commitment. That's what we coach you to. Yeah. It's your plan, your direction. It's really solidly Beautiful. laid. Out. Okay. Yeah, and you also, the- you also said to me as well as it can be, it's really in depth. You know, it's really thorough. Yes. And yeah. sometimes, yeah. if it's the first time that you might be looked at the concept of planning. Um, it can be a lot to take in. So you actually offer people to do that again, don't yes. they? Or two seat, two two seats, or one person doing it twice, which is just Absolutely. fantastic. Um, really, really fantastic. It allows people to refine, and it's yeah. So the yeah. last Monday and Tuesday in August. Yes. And are you okay if I just put your contact details down in the bottom of this video? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Paul, I can put your business name and details there, and people can reach out, maybe even for a chat. Absolutely. Um, or, also, or if they want to do your workshop or, you know, they want to pick your brains over a coffee. Yeah, that's, that's the way we work. Happy to, happy to oh. chat at any time. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, Paul, thank you very much. This has been insightful. It's been enjoyable as Good. usual. Uh, yes. Love having these conversations. Um, yeah. And yeah, just food for thought. You know, business owners, sit up, listen, keep your eyes open, look around yeah. um, and don't, don't miss you know, don't, yeah, don't mess look, wherever you're going. Mm. Yeah, and I, I, I suppose my, my closing comment is, yes, we may hear about the global economy and the impacts and everything else, but what happens overseas impacts us locally. Right, that's absolutely right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it is here, it is happening, the world has changed. So hope it's good uh, good listening for people. Yeah, and it's uh, we look forward to seeing everyone on the other side. Yes. <laughs> we'll do a recap on this. We'll do take one, right? We'll do take two and take three, Paul. Yeah, but thank absolutely. you very much for your time today. Um, I'll pop this up on YouTube. We'll put your details there. And I hope um business owners listening have taken away one thing, one idea, one concept um that you can think about to improve your business. If we've done that, we've done our job on the interview. Thank you very much, Paul Roach. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, see you later, Paul. You've been listening to District 32, immersion, inspiration for ambitious business owners with big dreams.